in your best manners. Pressure. Okay. Exactly. Okay. Well, thanks for coming. I uh, appreciate you guys all taking the time to come. Um, I don't want to take up a bunch of time, but Andrew Eastman is the senior recruiter at Keene up in Portland. And I'm assuming because you're here, you know who Keene is. Um, but he's been gracious enough to come down through the blizzard this morning, go around, not drive through Sardine, had to go through Tremont to come and talk to you guys today. So it was thanks for taking time. And, and uh, we'll leave leave it up to you. So Okay. Thanks awesome. Thanks, Chase. Thank you very much. Uh, so for, I think, just two of you, there's going to be a little bit of repeat with this because we were here not that long ago, um, and my boss was here, actually, so I've got some big shoes to fill. But uh, I work at Keen. Um, I also work, so the company that owns Keen Footwear also owns Chrome Industries. Does anyone here know Chrome? Heard of that brand? They're famous for the... If you don't, their, their, their products that they kind of put them on the map were their uh, messenger bag, bicycle messenger bag with the seatbelt buckle. So this is one of their bags, and I'm just giving them like a little introductory plug um, because we're going to be looking for um, some bag makers at some point in the near future. So something to keep in mind if you're into making bags. Um, this presentation today will be largely to uh, share about Keen, let you guys know kind of the story behind the brand, um, what it's like to work there, what it's like to work for an outdoor industry company that is largely doing a lot of the things that are indicative of the outdoor industry and, and kind of where the outdoor industry is headed. Um, I'd also love to just share some tips around finding your career, hence the name of this, um, and, and kind of some pointers. So I'm the senior recruiter for Keen. I do a majority of the hiring at all levels. and. Uh, I'm a pretty upfront guy, so I will tell you everything there is to know, um, everything there is to do, and everything there is to not do uh, to get yourself a job in this industry, and, and quite honestly, in my opinion, in, in your career in general. So to that end, um, I'd love to start out and just show you guys a short video. It's about three minutes, just to give you kind of an overview of Keen. Cool. Let's see if I can get to it. I'm gonna bounce it out. really just feels like coming out. Welcome to HQ is unlike anything else. There's smiles everywhere. It's very laid back. We're really collaborative, really scrappy, and we have a lot of fun. Okay. We have a really special thing here that is fun to be a part of. The Keen effect is integrity and values, giving back, reducing impact, and taking action. Paid service leave is something that's really unique to Keen, something that other employers don't do in this area. Reducing impact is all about reducing chemicals in the supply chain, ensuring that our factories are clean and that you know we aren't having a huge impact on our environment, which is really important to us. I do want to work for the man. I want to work for the world. Taking action is all about getting Keen fans and employees to engage and to get out there and to do the things that they love to do that help their communities and help their planet. We do the right thing for the right reasons. The Aussie is my boss. I get to hear that accent on all the time. We have such an amazing time at every closet, so it makes it a lot easier. It's a peace of mind to know that my son is safe. It's really neat to see a company put that into action and to have this support base more than your kids here. I like that. I like that too. It's not a corporate vibe. You feel like you're part of the family here. You're involved A to Z, soup and nuts. We like change, we enjoy making a difference and really shaking up the industry. The technology that we've been working on investing in for the last three to four years is cutting edge. We pride ourselves on doing bold, industry-changing things. We're operating and bringing in talent and tools that frankly the largest companies in the world are still uh, working to adopt. Unlike a larger company, you're not a small cog in a machine. You're a big cog in a small machine and can make an impact really quickly. We're so small and mighty. We're big enough that we can actually make a big difference as an organization, but we're small enough that you as an individual can make a big difference within our organization. We call our consumers our fans. 
love Keen fans. When I say love, you better be ready if you ask someone about their Keens because you're going to get an earful. It's kind of cool to hear those different stories or like someone that hiked through the Amazon jungle on our shoes. Keen is worldwide. We're a very global company. We have people situated across the U.S., Canada. We have incredible people serving us in Mexico, in China, Japan, Thailand, Vietnam, across Europe. It's like a family. And it all starts here in Portland. We're going to work in Portland. It's one of the best places in town to be. Keen and Oregon are great places to work if you love anything to do with the outdoors. Spend time in the city, go to the beach, or go hiking. Getting out beyond the city and into the mountains is one of my favorite things to do. I love Portland. It's an amazing city to live in. It's like I kind of pinch myself sometimes. And all those things combine into some kind of energy that is different here than you know any other place I've worked before. If you like taking risks, if you like change, if you like to live your values, this is the place for you. It's a fun ride. I love it. So a little bit of a pitch. Um, and just to know, uh, I'm here. Oh, boy, what do we have this? Sequestering. Uh, I'm here on behalf of both Keen and Chrome and also just in general service as, as a recruiter and somebody who's hired, like we get excited about people going to work for outdoor industry brands, whoever they are. And, and uh, one of my favorite things about the outdoor industry is there's a lot of camaraderie and um, it's a really small industry where people really look out for one another. So yeah, um, that being said, uh, I would love to just walk you through um, a little bit of history on Keen. If I can get, we got this going, cool. Um, give you a little background. I wanna talk about our uniqueness. And if you'll notice, it's spelled uh, uniquely. Um, so the uh, shoe that has probably taken us most by storm in the past, uh, I believe about five or so years, is a shoe that we call the Unique. Um, and that product, I'm gonna show you more of, you'll get to see it. Um, but obviously it's the word keen backwards with a U on it. We really pride ourselves on being unique um, front to finish. So culturally, the way that we operate, the products we put out, um, the way that we interact with our consumers and the environment, um, we're really proud about being unique. So I'll talk a little bit about that, um, leading into uh, our conscious approach to doing business. Then I'd love to just talk a little bit around um, some different tips that I'd like to offer to you guys wherever you're at in your career to be thinking or, or in school and preparing to get in your career to be thinking about. Um, and then at the end, I'd, I'd love to, to open it up for questions. So, so Keen was founded in 03. Um, it was uh, brought together by a couple of guys uh, in their garage. Um, a pretty funny story. So this guy's our owner. Um, he, his name is Rory First. He started it with a guy named Martin Keen, hence the name Keen. Uh, after they got it off the ground, Martin decided to go off and do other things. They kept the name and Rory bought the, bought the company. So uh, when he started the company, um, it was, it was uh, during the, um, or he was a big tennis player apparently is the story. And um, he wanted to find a solution for the fact that tennis players were always wearing out the soles of their shoes and wearing out the toes of their shoes as they like slid across the court. So um, he started taking, he'd go to automotive car parts uh, stores and buy floor mats for cars and would cut out around, oversized around a shoe, um, put that in his mother's oven, heat it up, wrap it up around the shoe, and that served as this protecting mechanism for, for these shoes for tennis players and so was born the idea of our kind of like rubber-toed protective footwear that really is, is a part of the, the Keen DNA and, and one of our first staple products called the Newport. Um, does anybody know what the Newport is? Have you seen a Newport sandal? Okay, cool. So I'm at some point in this presentation going to hand some of these around, but it's kind of our famous, it's been, it's been ripped off a time or two, but this is our famous, um, you know, kind of like rubber-toed, um, very, uh, very indestructive outdoor all-weather, or I shouldn't say all-weather, waterfront 
product. So this was one of our first products that, that we launched um, and has really been kind of like the some of the founding DNA for which we derive all of our other shoes. So uh, we're located in Portland, um, but we're also around the globe, as you heard in that video. We've got um, offices and factories everywhere. Um, our, our mission and our ethos is very largely around philanthropy and giving back. Um, it's something that is as important to Keen as making great products and, and driving revenue. And I'll talk some more about that as we, we get into the presentation. Lastly, we are a five category, is this thing still working for me here? I'm like hearing it and not, not hearing it. Um, a five category shoe company. So we make predominantly outdoor performance product um, again, as I mentioned, for waterfront, so those are like any kind of sandals that you would use on the river, at the lake, at the ocean, um, for hiking, which we call trailhead, um, so all of our hiking boots, and we have a full line of kids' product, and unlike a lot of other companies where uh, you will have what's called takedown for kids, so they'll basically take the adult product and shrink it for a child's foot. We do some of that, but predominantly we spend a lot of time investing technology and efforts around creating products that are specifically and, and scientifically designed for children's feet, for growing feet. Um, and then our utility. So um, a huge part of our business is the, the workwear, um, steel-toed boots, slip-resistant shoes for people who are working in kitchens, things like that. I've got a pair of utility boots on today. Um, so kind of like the more traditional mock-toed looking stuff, but but still we try to incorporate that keen DNA into to those products as well. So our uniqueness. Um, one of the things that we're all really proud of and, and I love to be a part of and, and to support, um, you know, I think a lot of people going into um, fields where you're going to be producing product uh, in this day and age, especially with all that's going on around the globe, um, are very conscious of our environment and the impact that we make on our environment. We care a ton about how, when we produce these, um, we're not just creating a bunch of junk that's going to wind up in someone's closet, um, you know, at a secondhand store or in a landfill. Uh, we also care a lot about the processes to make these and the the impacts and um, the, the side effects of, of producing products. So um, we actually have kind of a multi-pronged approach to managing our, um, our business and the way that um, sustainability and um, care for our environment is at, you know, of, of utmost importance. Um, so I'll talk a little bit more about it as I get into the presentation, but um, basically we've got a division who's exclusively dedicated to identifying ways that we can protect the areas that our products are used. So getting out and um, you know, trying to protect national monuments, um, working with organizations that are doing things to better the planet, um, lobbying in Washington to try to stop legislation from uh, you know, plowing and paving forests in important areas where we know that people, including ourselves, are gonna be using our products to go out and enjoy those, those um, you know, special precious areas. Uh, that's that's prong one. Prong two, they hand the baton off to our supply chain. So um, we have a unique setup that very few companies um, in the industry uh, and in the world have, which is we own most of our production. Um, we own our own factories. We do have a few partner factories, but for the most part, we own our own factories. We um, work very carefully with our materials and utilize processes and materials that are um, ultra conscious of the waste products that come from them, the ways that they're impacting the environment. And um, it's, pretty, it's pretty cool and interesting. It's not the least expensive way to do business, but it really allows us to control the way that we operate. Another great thing is that we can manage the labor conditions. So like in our offshore factories, you know, we have thousands of people working in those factories and we want to ensure that they get the same cultural and um, you know, ethical experiences, values-led experiences that I, I would have or anyone else at our headquarters in Portland. Um, and then finally, the employees. So everyone at Keene is heavily involved in philanthropy and giving back. Um, as an employee there, on top of just 
getting your paid time off. Everyone gets a week of paid time to go volunteer. And there's all kinds of opportunities to do that, whether it's from, you could go on a camping trip to restore riverbeds uh, at a Native American reservation, or we send people to um, uh, national, na natural disaster restoration sites to, to work on helping people clean up their homes or clean up areas. Um, and then like I use my time to volunteer at my daughter's school. So it's, uh, it's a really nice feature. And there's a whole lot of other things that we do, but I just kind of wanted to touch on that three-pronged approach. Um, we're a dog-friendly workplace, so long as your dog is friendly. Um, every now and then we have these instances where I'll, I'll be sitting there and you hear like a dog fight break out somewhere in the building. And so we kind of try to separate them, but um, it is dog-friendly. We have a kitchen and childcare on site. Um, it's a very, uh, so a story I like to tell about our headquarters, um, and you saw some, some shots of it in that video, but we're located in what's called the Pearl District in Portland, Oregon. Um, it's a real, real cool area. Our building is an old glass warehouse, uh, and when we bought the building and renovated it, uh, the owner came in and said, I want to utilize everything that we can. Let's repurpose and, um, and, and renovate this place so that we don't have to make a huge impact. And we were able to, to do that and throw out less than one dumpster of refuse in, in this entire huge building. So um, it's pretty awesome. There's exposed brick, there's beams. Uh, when you walk into the main, um, the main lobby of the building, it's basically like walking into a gymnasium. So this big open room right next to it, um, separated by some huge, like, kind of, if you would think, like warehouse garage doors, uh, is our flagship retail store. It is called The Garage. And so the Keen headquarters really has this vibe of, like, you're in a garage. Um, it's a jeans and t-shirts kind of place. It's a place where, like, there's hammocks and, um, you know, like, uh, kayaks and people coming in and out on bikes left and right. And, and it's a it's a place where, like, you're really allowed to just be you, be an outdoor lover, and get your work done however that may look. Um, great food, there's a thing called the Keen 15 that you have to watch out for working at Keen or you'll gain 15 pounds when you first start working for us because um, our, we have this tatted head to foot hipster head chef who works with local farms in the area and makes these just incredible meals that are subsidized. So you'll eat this like, you know, incredible lunch that you probably would have had with your parents paying for you going out to dinner somewhere for six bucks and um, it's something to watch out for. Uh, yep, child care, getting back, I talked about that. Big time bike, uh, bike supportive company. I'm a competitive cyclist. I, I take off on lunch rides and disappear for an hour or two, a couple times a week. We've got showers and locker rooms, so it's that kind of a place where you can be like, all right, I need to just clear the air and, and get out of here for a minute. Um, we're real supportive of that. Uh, hybrid Fridays is a thing where we let people let people get out early on Fridays. A lot of companies do that. Um, has anybody here heard of the Higgs Index? You guys familiar with that? Cool. So it's fairly new, um, but it is it's basically a, a, an outdoor industry. Um, it's a new thing in the outdoor industry. It's a sustainability uh, measuring tool. So uh, a lot of companies are gravitating towards the Higgs index, and those that aren't um, are starting to feel it. So for example, REI has made a commitment that they will not work with any company that isn't um, following the Higgs index practices and certify it under Higgs index. So Keen is one of the first companies that has gotten on board with the Higgs index. And um, if you don't know a lot about that, you should, you should read up on it. It's worth knowing about wanting to go into this industry. A few other things like education reimbursement. You can go, go get some additional schooling once you've started with us. Um, great healthcare. We get lots of free outdoor products. I don't know if you guys know this, but once you start working in the outdoor industry, you pretty much have a hookup with every other company that's out there. So, um, you know, what, what I do is anytime I need to buy like a new tent or um, a new jacket or whatever it is, I'm careful about shoes just because uh, I do own shoes of a lot of different brands, but out of respect for Keen, I try not to go showing up in, you know, a pair of uh, Timberland or Merrill boots at work. Um, and and I'm not going to say that I own any, <coughs> um, but uh, but I do reach out to these companies and and am able to get pretty sweet discounts on outdoor products. So that's another perk of working in this industry. Um, and then we do some give back days where we we send everybody out to work together and 
Um, that might be like working at a local farm, um, you know, helping to support underprivileged youth in our city, um, or uh, you know, working with the with the food co-op, that sort of thing. So, uh, so this is a big slide, and rather than walk through the whole thing, I am going to just kind of highlight some stuff. So, we talked about we we were founded in two thousand three. Um, launched with our Newport sandal, and uh, we took that that shoe, which is a summer and, and spring and summer product, to uh, to the winter outdoor retailer show. Um, so I think people were kind of scratching their heads at us and wondering what the heck we were doing there. Uh, and it's all been a whirlwind since then. Um, shortly after we opened our doors, uh, the 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 devastating tsunami in um, in Japan took place. I don't know if y'all remember that in 2004. And uh, the, at the time, the company was still very small. I mean, we're talking, I think, like maybe no more than a couple dozen people at most. Um, I'm not even sure on that. But uh, some heads came together and said, you know, like, let's do something about this. Like, we care a lot about, like, trying to do better and, and, and help the planet as we're doing what we're doing. And so we, we chose to take 100% of our, um, our first year's marketing budget and donated it to um, helping clean up efforts in, in Japan with the tsunami. So that, that's a highlight that we're really proud of. Um, gosh, a lot of this other stuff I've kind of touched on. Um, you know, we got into hiking boots in 05, um, have done a lot in terms of sustainability, um, you know, making sure that we're checking all of our boxes there. What's, what's really awesome about working for Keen is we're a company that walks the walk beyond, you know, it, it, sustainability and environmental care is something that we all um, know about and understand the importance of, but I do think that there's something special about people who work in the outdoor industry, obviously because we care about being in the outdoors, that, that we really um, need to, act, to take action in terms of helping um, you know, sustain and better our, our planet. And um, Keen really authentically does that because of the people that work there, because we all give a shit. And uh, so um, I think beyond that, it's, it's pretty much like a, a nice little map overview of us. Um, Live, Mon Live Monumental is a cool campaign that I'm going to talk a little bit about, or I'll show, show some video footage of um, that happened in 2015 where we. We tricked out an old RV in Keen Yellow, sent a bunch of employees around the, the country um, just to start a movement and, and, uh, and campaign for protecting national monuments in the US. So it involved a lot of, um, again, lobbying, uh, working with, with the government, and as well as um, higher education institutions, um, organizations that are doing better to, get to, uh, to protect the planet, and. Um, and it, it, it still carries on to this day uh, that, that we all strive to live monumental. So, um, yeah, let me, let me move forward here and I'll share some other stuff. Or not. Okay, so um, Better Takes Action. I've touched on some of these things already. Um, we are, uh, this is kind of one of our newer campaigns where we're really um, trying to promote our, not just our employees and ourselves, but our, our consumers and, and our whole ecosystem to be one that takes action towards being a better company. Um, things like I've mentioned, we do a lot of investing um, and, and giving back and, um, have gifted money to, to Mercy Corps is an example that we've got here. Um, advocating for a healthy planet. Um, ah, the Better Takes Action phone booth. So we have this like old fashioned phone booth in our, our retail store and um, in it is a, um, a three ring binder full of scripts, phone scripts. So you open it up, we invite people when they come into our store to um, pick a script, and each script is geared towards a cause. Um, you know, perhaps it's like protecting a national park, or perhaps it's trying to stop um, legislation that's that's planned around, um, you know, closing um, 
closing a national monument or um, any number of those sorts of things. So you'll pick one. There's a phone number provided. Each of the scripts has a phone number that is um, a direct call into the administrative offices for whatever um, government official is responsible for driving that, that issue. And the script basically, so the way that the way that change is made is people calling and um, voicing their opinion around uh, what some of these decisions are and, and, and whether or not a person is in support of it. So each, each of these scripts has um, the messaging that you can use to call, leave a message because that's what it ends up being is you wind up calling these places and typically get voicemail or get a, a receptionist. Um, but uh, the goal is, is we're trying to encourage as many people as possible to, to call in, voice their uh, concerns, voice their demands, and uh, you know, hopefully make help to make change and, and affect um, some of these initiatives so that we can protect the places we love. Um, if any of you are interested in some of those scripts, it's something that if we, we correspond afterwards, I can get you those, and we'd love to encourage you to make some phone calls. Uh, and then supply chain. So um, I talked a little bit about this, but what I'd love to do now is show you a quick video that, uh, that talks about some of the things we're doing to, to be a more eco-conscious company. All right, hold on a second here. Uh, 
Okay. Um, so this is just a little bit more, I, I, and I want to try to jump ahead here to some of the, the employment stuff because this is a, a pretty um, awesome opportunity. I appreciate you guys allowing us to really pitch Keen in this presentation. Um, but these are some of the organizations that we work closely with in terms of um, making an impact. Uh, we're, you know, again, th this, uh, this presentation, I'm kind of repurposing it um, and one that's been done before, but it, it clearly kind of shows off what, what all we have done and do. And we're, we're very proud of, we have um, donated in our 16, almost 17 years of business. Now we've donated $17 million that we've raised to organizations around the planet. Still continue to do that. Every employee gets an opportunity to decide where those dollars go. So it's pretty cool. We basically do a voting process um, once a year, and um, you know, so I'm from the state of Montana. I, I love Montana, and oftentimes there are um, you know different areas of Montana that uh, have been put up for the ballot to determine where some of that money will go. And I've gotten to help vote and see some some different areas that. I grew up in and around, um, you know, be affected and impacted in a positive way because of, of what Keen's done for it. So, uh, let's see. I'm going to kind of jump ahead here. There's our Live Mon Monumental bus and that phone booth I was telling you about. Um, I talked to you about our our kind of multi-pronged approach, and uh, you just saw in the video some of the things that we're doing. Um, you know, the, the probiotic inserts, which is a really cool way to control odor and, and a pretty innovative new technology, better leather, PFC free. And now let's talk a little bit about um, just job searching. So let's do a raise of hands. How many of you are freshmen? Is anybody a freshman in here? Okay, got it. Uh, sophomores? Cool. Juniors? A few, nice, and any seniors in here? No, a couple at least, okay, awesome. So these are things that I think are valuable at any point in college and or your career to be considering and thinking about. Um, as a recruiter, I am very conscious of this because uh, my job is day in, day out, uh, evaluating people and trying to find great talent. Um, and I'm pretty much tasked with seeking out needles in a haystack. Um, that's really, in my opinion, what our marketplace and the outdoor industry specifically has, has come to at this point. You've got to really stand out and, and uh, you've got to really be the right thing at the right time for the right place. Um, that can obviously be pretty stressful and, and put a lot of pressure on a person. So these are some things that I think help a lot and will definitely get you a leg up on, on your competition. Um, so anytime you're looking for jobs uh, and at any point in your career, it's super critical to know what it is you're talking about and who it is that you're interested in. So just start spending time educating yourself about the companies that you think you might want to work for. Um, you know, follow their Instagram feed, follow, their, follow them on LinkedIn, connect with people. I encourage you to just go through and start connecting with people. There's a lot of different opinions about this, but my belief is LinkedIn, if you don't have a profile, you should definitely have one. Um, and I think you should reach out to the companies that you're interested in. And yeah, take pictures of this with your phone, please. Um, you should reach out to these companies and start connecting with people. Um, I, I can tell you, if you reach out to me and connect with me, I'll definitely accept it. And I think most people will. On that note, SEO, does everybody know what SEO is? Search engine optimi optimization, like you want to be searchable. And you would be amazed, I was telling some of the group earlier, uh, how many times I have been tasked with trying to identify someone for a job and several months in, somebody gets referred to me that turns out to be an amazing candidate, but they didn't come up in my search. And the reason they didn't is their LinkedIn did not have the keywords that my search tool would crawl for when I was looking for them. So on your LinkedIn profile, make sure that you put footwear, apparel, bags, outdoor, any kind of words that are related to what you wanna do because those things are what LinkedIn, Google, any of the search engines are gonna pick up and or miss if you don't have them on your profile. And the same goes for your resume. So that, that's really critical. Like. It literally is the, the one of the things that I think probably like gets people the job 
far, far above most other things. Um, it's important to be consistent. Um, so managing like having uh, resumes in formats that will be um, accepted by different systems when you're applying for jobs. Sometimes if you've got, you know, I know like designers like to sometimes have a custom resume and that's great, but also be prepared to have like a text only resume um, in, a, in a, um, a, a word a word platform that will, or I, what am I looking for here? A, a word processing platform that will will make it through the system. Uh, email, voicemail references. So as you're applying and you're you're looking towards jobs, it's just important to make sure that everything is cohesive and everything makes sense. So if you're emailing somebody, you're using the same resume that um, you know you're going to show them in an interview. You'd be amazed how many times we'll have somebody apply. We really love what what they show us uh, on a resume and then they show up to the interview and it's something different. We're like, who is this person? Um, and then display the attributes that are standard internally. So if you are interested in working for, say, Chrome Industries, um, first and foremost, I would say, apply to these places um, pretty liberally but be knowledgeable about what they're about. So Chrome is a real like urban hipster cyclist brand. If that doesn't really appeal to you and you're much more of like a hiker, mountaineer, backpacker, skier, I would encourage you probably not necessarily to, to spend a lot of time on Chrome. Now there could be some good experience to be had there, but in this day and age, companies are really looking for people who align with what they're about. Um, I will say Keen and I strive to think outside of the box and to try to find people who aren't just like a cookie cutter fit to us so that we can continue to diversify. But these are all things to be thinking of um, as, you're, as you're pursuing companies. Who are your assets? What avenues or contacts do you have? So also super important to get to know people. Um, I'm glad to be one of those. So after this, find me on LinkedIn, send me an email and be like, hey, I, I watched your presentation. I'd love to just stay in touch. Continue to bug me. It doesn't bug me. Um, it, it is important that you get to know people and uh, have those inroads to be able to, to um, get heard, be seen. Um, it, it's one of those things where like, so one of the reasons I'm here today is to talk about our internship program. Um, we've got a, a summer internship program that happens every year. It's a paid internship program and the applicant pool for that winds up being thousands of candidates. We get so many people applying and the ones we generally tend to hire are the ones that one of us has gotten to know somehow. And uh, we, we give everyone a chance. We really try to go through all the resumes, evaluate the portfolios, but at the end of the day, those relationships are critical. Uh, and then, so it, like I said, I'm, I'm repurposing this. This was all my boss is doing. This is my piece right here. Um, as I mentioned, I, I think be picky, roll with the punches and trust. What I like to get behind with this is, um, as you go through this process, it can be really tedious um, and sometimes pretty defeating. Uh, trying to talk to companies, trying to get to people, trying to get people to hear you, trying to get an interview, trying to get a job somewhere is um, a backbreaker. And what I have learned in my career and have also seen work real effectively with people so as to maintain a level of happiness and, and sanity is to trust that so long as you believe in what you're capable of and you love what you're doing and you apply to these positions and you put your best foot forward, if it works out, great. If it doesn't work out, the right thing will work out so long as you just continue to take action towards it. So a little bit of some, uh, um, some motivational uh, backing there, but, but um, it's real. And I know from talking to thousands of candidates that it can be so frustrating to get yourself a gig. And by removing some of that pressure from yourself, it's, it's in those moments that I think the right thing winds up landing in your lap. So. Uh, first impressions in your personal brand. So um, I added this first line. Be you, own who you are, how you are, and what you're about. Um, it's hard enough to get yourself into something that you that you're going to be happy and love doing. 
um, let alone then compromising yourself to just get your foot in the door, which we absolutely have to do, and especially coming out of school, um, you gotta pay your dues. So there's certainly gonna be situations where you take a job that you know, maybe you're not doing exactly what it is that you wanna be doing. Be willing to do that, but, but also know that you're going to offer your, your best value to a company and do your best work and be your happiest when you own who you are. So I really think that's, that's a critical one. Um, handshake, email address, follow-ups, and website UX. This is all around just really ensuring that um, you are uh, consistent across all of your touch points and um, presenting yourself in a way that, that is true to who you are. Um, so things to consider are, um, I don't know what he meant by handshake, but the email address bit, um, if you've got like, you know, um, bongrips420 at gmail.com for your email address, you probably should change it to like outdoor head or something that's gonna be a little more skewed to, I hope none of you have that as your email address, by the way. But, um, ex ex outdoor bongrips. Um, uh, these things are important and can really like make or break your chances at an opportunity. Um, being creative with follow-ups, if you do get an opportunity to talk to someone, I, I'm someone who, who you know, is pretty transparent. It, you don't have to necessarily be creative with me, but I do think it is um, a nice touch when people will at least reach out and, and send a, uh, like a custom follow-up that maybe touches on some of the things you talked about, maybe highlights a project you've worked on, maybe points out an article you saw about the company, something that, that gets your attention or gets the attention of the person you're trying to reach. Um, having a website uh, and and UX, I'm not entirely sure what, what was behind that one either, but um, but I do think having a website, uh, if you don't have one, make a Squarespace site or a, um, you know one of the other web design tools to, to host your work, to hold your resume, it has your contact information, you can make it simple, but it's really great to be able to send someone somewhere to get a full picture on who you are. Phone interview, video interviews, um, you know, my, my two cents on these are, uh, I think it, it's really, again, about being who you are. Um, you know, I, I, I think it's important to get in, have some good, and I know, I think we're gonna get to a slide in a second to talk about this, but to have some good questions in mind that you wanna ask. Um, be prepared to be concise with your answers to questions. Um, and, one of the little tricks that I like to offer to people to be confident for doing phone interviews and video interviews and even in-person interviews um, is to pretend like you're someone that you know that's really confident. So if you, uh, maybe, maybe it's a movie character or maybe it's somebody, one of your teachers or maybe it's a friend or somebody you know that's really charismatic and confident, again, be you but pretend that you have their confidence because that um, absolutely shows in an interview and, and um, you know, you wanna pump yourself up and, and be psyched up to go in and, and not only be interviewing, but uh, be, being interviewed by the company, but interviewing the company for yourself. Uh, ah, be about what value you can offer. So th this one's really critical, I think. Um, a lot of people are, are thinking as they're going, I gotta get a job, I need to get a job so I can get a paycheck, so I can move forward in my career. Shift that thinking to, I wanna work for a place where I can crush it, where I can come in and make an impact, where I can offer value to them. If you give to someone else or give to something else, you're bound to ultimately get back, so. Um, managing your personal brand. This one kinda goes back into the, the email address. Google yourself, um, avoid any pictures of bong rips on, on your social media that might get found because you'd be amazed. I mean, we, we have had, we've interviewed some people for high level roles. Uh, there was one in particular where we were considering to hire somebody for like a director level position and we found all of these, just by accident, someone found all these photos on Facebook of that person in um, some very inappropriate, um, Situations. <laughs> we'll leave it at that, and um, and cl and the and and the clothing that they were wearing or lack thereof um, <laughs> was something that basically made us go, 
I don't know that this is someone that we necessarily feel confident putting in front of a team of people to lead, to lead um, because in their personal life, they, they are clearly not aligned in the way that they're presenting themselves. Now, obviously, there's some judgment that's passed in that process, and um, I personally am not a huge fan of, of judging someone on what their personal life is, um, but it's real. We're human, and people do that. So I think it's important to really like manage that piece. Um, and then social media is a liability, that's what that means. Social media is an asset, you know, linking in with people, connecting with people, sharing, sharing stories, articles, that sort of thing is, is a great approach. Um, but then get out from behind the pixels. So any opportunity you can go, shake somebody's hand, get a conversation with somebody, um, you know, that's critical touch points for people that stick with people and they remember. How are we doing on time? Jesus, it's going long. So portfolio tips. I'm not going to talk into portfolio tips. If you guys want to take a picture of this, um, and if you have any questions about it, uh, I'd be glad to follow up about it. Um, but you know, basically, it's, it's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, website versus PDF versus physical. You want to be conscious of where and what makes sense for what you're doing. So um, you know, if you are if you are an apparel designer, having probably a print PDF um, portfolio or, or a print, print portfolio, a PDF that you can email someone of uh, samples as well as then having a website, um, I think probably all three of those things are valuable to have um, and, and maybe like pared down depending on, on what thing it is. Um, and yeah, just I guess I would, I would say if you have questions about this, Follow up with me. Interview tips. Uh, so these are worth talking through real quick. Um, aligning job description and resume. This one's really important. It's a lot of work, but if you're looking for a job and you find something that you're really excited about, take the time to go through your resume. You don't have to redo the whole thing, but tailor the bullets and the, the work experience that you've had towards the job to be able to say like, these are things I've done. So, okay, I see they want this. These are things I've done that show that I can do this thing. pre make some strong answers. So be thinking about things that somebody might ask you. I'm sure they're probably gonna ask like, what's your process? Um, what, uh, you know, what would you do if you encountered a situation where um, you know, you had to produce something quickly? Or what would you do if you encountered a situation where what you worked on didn't come out the way you thought it was going to? Things like that. Come up with answers that will um, allow you to, to show that you're going to be capable of handling those situations. Um, every brand seeks collaborators, creators, problem solvers, self-starters. Absolutely true. Keen is all about looking for people who um, are out-of-the-box out thinkers, who are innovators, who are disruptive. One of my favorite things about us is that we really embrace people being who they are. Um, but as I mentioned earlier, and we'll mention again, it's so critical, and I think that success in any industry is being able to roll with the punches as well. So um, you, know, you can come in, and I think being a little bit of a hot shot is not a bad thing. I think being proud of what you can do is not a bad thing. But I also think that in any industry, and especially at a place like Keen, where I think most outdoor industry companies, you've got to be comfortable with the idea that you're going to work on a lot of stuff that might never see the light of day. And <coughs> It's experience that you're getting. It's opportunities to, um, you know, to learn. Same with interviewing. You're going to go on a lot of interviews where you may not get a job, but chalk it up to opportunities for you to go. Hmm, what went on in that? What could I have done differently? You know, try to get feedback. All these things. Um, be brand sensitive. Again, that goes back to thinking about what the brand uh, ethos and values are. Um, you know, so you're not going to want to interview at a place like Keen and. Uh, probably talk about um, I don't know, the only thing that's coming to mind right now is Donald Trump um, <laughs> so uh, we're pretty open but um, but I, there are there are limitations um, intelligent questions impress that one I think makes sense so be thinking of intelligent questions that you can ask do yourself a favor and don't ask about paid time off or, or the the salary or those kinds of things in the first interview, you'd be amazed. I still get a lot of people who would do that on their first interview with me, and it's like, 
come on people like what what are you wanting to get out of this of course you're wanting a paycheck of course you want to pay time off we get that everyone needs that in in their job but um, it just it pretty quickly shows like where the priorities are so um, all of them reflect we talked about that be you interview them as much as they are interviewing you I think that instills some confidence um, act the part I, I touched on that pretend like you are confident even if you're not um, and then trust this is this is a little more my woo woo if it's meant to be it's meant to be um, if you work out it to stay positive the right thing will end in your lap I believe that uh, finally, go the extra mile. So every day there are hundreds of applicants, hundreds of emails, and plenty of meetings to contend with, so stand out. Um, I think anything that you're working on, if you're really passionate about it, blog about it. Um, post it on your Instagram. I've already heard some cool stories about how people have gotten jobs just by putting their stuff out there. Um, you know, Come up with creative ways that you can show yourself off. Um, come up with creative, creative ways that you can be seen. Um, volunteer. If you can get involved in organizations where you know maybe they're doing things to um, you know, community focused or environmentally focused, sustainability focused, get involved. Um, continue to learn mock projects. Talk to consumers. Oh, and then yeah. So that that's pretty much. Um, a nutshell of the advice that I would give to anybody, even if, even if at a freshman or sophomore point in, in your schooling, is to be beginning to think about these things because they're real stuff that you're going to be, um, you know, having to, to handle. And um, the more time you have to kind of prepare for it, practice with it, um, and and set yourself up nicely, the easier it's going to be to find a job. So that is my presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, can I answer any questions? Anybody have any thoughts? So this is going back to the social media as a liability, yeah. and I've heard mixed answers on this, and so I'm kind of confused. I've heard that some people are like, you want to be careful as far as like political opinions on Facebook or like on, on social media, like. Yep. But some people say, I mean, honestly, it's not that big of a deal. It's better than, you know, like, you know, inappropriate pictures or anything like that. So I guess as a recruiter, if you see someone on Facebook that's very vocal about their political opinion, whatever side it may be, yeah. I guess, how, how does that paint that person in your mind? Great question. Uh, so, you know, this is one of those that it's going to differ with each person. I don't care about that stuff. I don't judge people on it. I think people are allowed to have their opinion and their, their viewpoint and perspective in politics and life. Um, unfortunately though, I think there are absolutely recruiters and companies who are gonna go, okay, this person on their Facebook is ranting about this you know, political issue or this initiative or whatever it might be. We're not interested, no way. No way would we talk to that person. Now, my opinion is would you really want to work at a place that's going to do that anyway? And so that might just be like a bullet dodged, but it is important to be conscious of this stuff. Like the fact of the matter is we're all human and um, we're all kind of like inherently judging one another. It's just the way that we work. And so um, I think it's wise to be like dial it back a notch from whatever you, you care about in terms of what you put out there online. Um, that you, you stand for. And then again, I also think stand for yourself and probably if a place has you know, got a problem with your political viewpoint, then that's not gonna be a good fit for you to begin with. So, yeah. Chase? I would just say like, you know the platform that you're sharing on. Like, I think if you're sharing on LinkedIn, like, you're gonna wanna talk about like, professional things. Like, totally. Things specific to your industry. And on your Instagram, Right. I think there's a way to separate it and share what you want to share with the company and like put your best foot forward. Well said. I agree. Yeah. Cool. Anything else? Yes. Do you still have an application of a uh, project? Um, do, do you just have that? Or do you still 
Um, so, well, so I appreciate you asking this question because I want to make sure that I talk about our internships uh, again and, and to kind of bring that around. And then as far as we've had things like that, um, so I've been at the company two and a half years. In my time there, there have been some things like that that I have not been really privy to. Um, so we, we've done stuff where we've had, um, you know, students do a project as an opportunity to show what they can do, and it might be like a, a mock keen product, um, or to take a, a product that we already have and improve it. Um, as far as if there's something official right now, not to my knowledge, but my knowledge is limited. So I would love if, if I mean, you mentioning that, I'll look into it and follow up with you. Oh, okay. I know that this happens at other Yeah. I want to see, uh, it doesn't have to take a lot of time. Kind of I see. To see if what you submit matches with your portfolio. Uh, absolutely. And, and we have done both um, in the hiring process. And ironically, uh, or not ironically, but we have hired some people when we haven't done that, and then it has not worked out because we haven't done that. So it's a thing that that I think is important, but we don't always do. Um, as far as our internships are concerned, so uh, our internship, or our, our, the program is actually called Keen Internships. Um, it's a 12-week paid internship with Keen in Portland, Oregon, at our headquarters. Um, accommodations are provided. Uh, I think some food is provided, um, and then it's paid, and um, you get to come in and work with with uh, whatever area that that it is that you're focused on. As I've been mentioning, so unfortunately this summer we're, we're gonna have, we're gonna be limited in terms of product design and development opportunities. Um, there are a couple, but we just went through a major kind of transformation. And so, so whereas like last year we had 16 internships, this year we have 10. Um, what I will do is share information with Chase to send out um, do you guys all correspond somehow, or? Yeah. Okay, cool. And we've sent the internships out to everybody, that's ever seen those. Mm -hmm. yeah. Cool. Seen them, I can send them out again. Awesome, yep. Yeah. So we just opened it up. The applications will be uh, open until January, mid-January. Like I said, there will be a line around the block for these internships, but I promise you that if you email me on LinkedIn and, and just say, hey, Andrew, I watched your presentation, I'm interested in these, opportunities or which which opportunity it is I will give you some special treatment um, your time today sitting here with me is is uh, is important and I, I appreciate it so I'm glad to return the favor um, somebody interested in maybe a not uh, not design directed job mm -hmm. um, would you still suggest the website and portfolio submission with the resume so studying marketing and should and merchandising or something Great question. No, if you're like a finance student or like uh, maybe going into manufacturing, I don't think you need a website, but if you're going into marketing or, or branding of any sorts, absolutely. I would still, in that instance, then I would try to have like, you know, some graphic design work you've done or a presentation that you've done or a campaign that you've worked on. Um, the other thing to not be afraid of at the level you're at, there there are a lot of concerns I think around like, well, what can I put in my portfolio? What am I um, authorized to put? You definitely want to be respectful and careful, but it's not as though you're trying to necessarily make a buck. I mean, I guess in a way you are, but you're you're not putting yourself out there and probably doing it in in um, mass fashion. Rather, you you're using these to um, strategically get opportunities. So. Grab some of the logos from different websites of companies that you've interned with or that you've even done mock projects for. Put them on your portfolio. Put them, put them in places where people are going to see like, oh, wow, yeah, this person's worked for these brands. Um, I'm, I'm kind of a, a believer of ask for forgiveness um, as opposed to permission. But you got to do you. So. Yes. Is there a certain proportion of keen staff that works remotely, or are you all based in one of the headquarters around the That's a great question as well. 
Um, so a <clears throat> couple answers to that. We have about 300 people at our headquarters in Portland. We try to create a really fun and collaborative environment um, where again, like things like you try not to gain weight and you try not to have too much fun, but we really encourage people coming to the office and working together. Um, we don't have an official remote work policy, but it's something that our HR department is working to make official. The reason it's not is because we're so laid back that it's kind of like you get there when you get there, you leave when you leave, nobody's checking up on you, but when it comes time for the work to be done, it had better kick ass. And if it doesn't, then we're kind of like, eh, I don't know if this is gonna work out. And I love that kind of environment because it puts it all on me. Um, as a company, holistically, we're about 3,000 people. So we have people working in factories in Thailand and Mexico. We have um, salespeople out across the country, across Canada and Europe, China and Japan. Um, so we've got people out there who are working out of their car or out of their home. Um, but, but largely like at HQ where all of our product design and development and marketing and finance and HR and supply chain, all that stuff sets it in Portland. I don't know if it's a common thing in the industry. It should be. Um, the parameters at Keen are you have to have worked with us for a year. So that's that's with a handful of things at Keen. Like we want to know that you're going to commit to us. We're really big on offering people careers. We want people to come and to stay and develop with us. Um, once you've been with us for a year, and there are some exceptions to that, I might add. Um, if you're if you if you come in and you're crushing it, and you're like, I really want to you know, go do this two month program that's gonna help me to do my job that much better. We'll make exceptions and, and reimburse those things, or reimburse those things. Um, but the, the reimbursement actually works as a, both a reimbursement and then we will even foot the bill for some tuition. After that year period, the standard that we offer people is 2,500 bucks a year. So it's not a ton, but it allows you to go take some classes, um, you know, maybe get a certification of some sort. But then again, like if there's something specific you want to do and you talk with your manager and kind of work with our, our, um, our HR department about it, I have seen people get entire like master's programs approved and paid for by Keen. Um, the, the other caveat with it is usually, and this, this tends to be a, an industry where I think kind of like just a professional standard, is when a company pays for something for you, then you typically sign some sort of payback agreement that states, we'll pay for this for you, and then you can't turn around and quit and go work for somebody else. And if you do, you have to pay us back for it. So, and that usually has like a 12 month clause on it or something like that. So, like for example, we relocate people. So, you know, for all you guys living here, if you were to land a job with Keen, we'd pay to move you there. Um, but with that relocation, we would say, all right, we're gonna pay to move you here and we realized that Nike and Adidas and Danner and Columbia are all our neighbors. And if you go work for one of them inside of a year of working for us, you're gonna have to pay us back for your relocation. I think it's fair. So. Cool. Anybody? Yeah? What's your favorite part of working at Keen? Awesome question. I don't know, or one good uh, thing. Yeah, it's a hard <laughs> question. Um, my favorite part of working at Keen is getting to getting to just like be however the hell I am, and and that is like having I've been in my career for almost twenty years and I've worked for quite a few companies that position themselves as like cool creative hip companies, and they want you to fit their mold, and they want you to you know say the right things and do the right things and be the right way, and my sort of like. I, I've been just kind of a renegade my whole life. It has been like, right is purely an opinion, good is purely an opinion, and, and I just need to be able to like, obviously mind and respect the boundaries of working with other people, but be who I am. So yeah, that's my favorite part. I think other things, I like the food a lot. The food's really good at Keen. 
Um, I love the flexibility. Like I can't stand working for places where I'm expected to like be in on the dot or I'm in trouble and you know have to leave at a certain time and have to make sure that I've checked in and gotten permission to go to the bathroom and stuff like that. So yeah, I've worked in places that are like that where you have to get permission to go to the bathroom. So it's it still exists, believe it or not. Yeah. What do you think set you apart from the other people that were getting hired for your position? Do you have your kids? Um, I, what did you do? Yeah, uh, no, I get the question, and I would say um, I I did what I what I what I told you. I, I went in and acted like I was confident, um, which I will say it, it's it's partly an act that I've more cultivated into who I am. Um, you know, like. Interviewing is a nerve-wracking thing because you care about getting the opportunity and you want to put your best foot forward and people are comfortable with confident people. Um, and at the time, uh, I was, part, part of it came naturally because to be perfectly honest, at the time I wasn't all that excited about Keeney. Um, it, it was, for me, it was an opportunity to get out of another job that I wasn't that crazy about. I was, I've been a recruiter for a minute, but I just wanted to be in a company that really like accepted me for who I am and that I aligned with their values. And I researched Keen and discovered like, oh, this company seems to do that for me. Um, but I'd also been applying for some other companies. Um, and what I later found is that from a value standpoint, so I'll just be really honest and I'm being recorded. So I, 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 <laughs> I hope that not everyone sees this, but I didn't think that our products were that cool. Um, and so what's funny is now that I've worked there, I think they're so cool. Like I've learned so much about what goes into them and what we're all about that I own so many of these shoes. And, and my wife is like, she's still trying to be convinced that some of them are cool. And she's like, I can't believe you wear those. And I'm like, these are awesome. What are you talking about? And it's because I've learned what is behind these products and, and how um, impactful they are and how well made they are. Um, and and then again the company the culture the values I got into it and was like going through the interview process but also interviewing with some of these cooler companies and quickly realizing that these cooler companies were actually like kind of not so cool and uptight and and stressful and keen is this place where like those things stress exists at keen don't get me wrong like it's a work hard play hard place um, but again it's a place that that really like welcomes a wide variety of folks and, and empowers them to do great things. Yeah. So I know you guys do like a collaborative project called the Interns of the Summer. Yeah. I was curious like what kind of stuff has come out of that or what types of projects they do. Okay. Uh, so now I'm going to probably get marks against me when, when and if my colleagues see this because there's been amazing stuff that's come out of it. And off the top of my head, um, we've had some different like brand campaign work that's come out of it. Um, we've hired a bunch of interns, and this is where I fail because I can't tell you I can't tell you what else beyond that. But I could follow up and let you know cool. some really cool stuff that's come out of it, and um, and stuff that's impacted the company that we're still you know doing or following or using. To this day, yeah. Chase. Yeah. How much of the internship program is motivated by finding people that could stay on in a full-time capacity later on? Because there's some other companies that we have we work with and place interns at, but it's hey, you come in and then we set you free. Yeah. Like they, they don't actually want students to come in and, and then stay on in positions. And I know you have limited numbers of full-time positions, but is that part of the motivation? very much part of it. Yeah, we're not bashful about that. We we want to find great people and it works so well to have students come in, work with us. We get 12 weeks to see how they do and to see how we work well with them or not well with them and it's been fantastic. I mean, we've, we've hired quite a few interns. Um, actually, one of the people who some, just a few of you met, her name is Lisa Holm on my team, was a key intern and she's awesome. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's very much something that, that we're trying to do. Um, 
And I don't know how we're doing on time. I think we're probably wrapping up. Before everybody goes, though, I have some some small but fun goodies to share. Um, so I, I wasn't able to pack a bunch of our swag. We pride ourselves on it, but, but uh, I, I had too much to carry. So I have a couple things I want to give you. And then I also have 50% um, off shoe cards. So I'd love to share those with you guys. Um, you can go, go online. You have to use them online. So go into like REI, figure out what you like, try it on, and then just order them on our site. Yeah. Any other questions though? <laughs> Do you like this one? Yeah, I did that. Yeah. Isn't that cool? Yeah, I don't know who made this, but it just was on my desk one day, and I'm like, ah, somebody knows me. <laughs> so, yeah. Awesome. Anything else? Yes. Um, chalk it up to experience. Bullet dodged. I mean, I really, you know, I, I do think that um, probably do some self reflection. So, depending on what the circumstances are, those could be wildly varied. I don't know, you know, like there are places. So I was talking to Chase about this earlier. Like the fact of the matter is, like we all have an ego, and we're all dealing with people's egos. And sometimes two egos just don't work well together, and it could be the fault of one or the other or both. Um, and so I like to look in those situations at what I brought to the table and what things I might do differently, and learn from it. And as far as if maybe there's a concern around like the, their reputation being tarnished from that situation, um, I think owning it and taking the highest highest road that you can is the thing that's in one's best interest. So like if you screwed up and you said or did something that was inappropriate or you you know party too hard through your internship and you slept late and were weren't there on time, own that. And I think if somebody were to ask you about it later on, say, what happened with this? You might say, gosh, I was going through a period of my life where I was just more about fun than, than what it was. And honestly, my priorities might not have been right, but it worked for me in that situation. Here's, here's the things I've done to change myself, and here's where I'm at now. Um, you know, I think in the end, like, if something like that happens, I know it can be kind of traumatic and it can feel sort of devastating, but there's always a silver lining to these things. And I think that looking at looking at it, learning from it, and then making adjustments in yourself is is worth it. And I feel like that's kind of life, right? Like we go around tripping and falling and then go like, okay, how do I not trip and fall again? So. Cool? Awesome. Thank you guys so much. So if you want to just come down here, I think that'll be easier. I'll give you a shoe card, and we've got the we got the keychains. So, in fact, since it's a light group, if you want to grab a couple, uh, we can do like two key, two keychains. We got these little.